Charlie, good morning, everyone. Well, let's invite you once again into the realm of uh, female aesthetic surgery to ask some very important questions, simple but important questions, to improve uh, the, the successfulness and the impact of women's life of these operations. First, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Mike Van Rogetzi. I'm working at the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology, and my supervisors are uh, Flavor Chwarbiro and Levanta Shara. My mission is to aim for perfection in aesthetic surgery, what else would be, and my vision is to find the best methods which allow the uh, best functional and aesthetic outcome for patients. We started with two uh, projects. One of them is investigating one of the most uh, uh, progressive uh, uh, operations of uh, female aesthetic surgery, which is all kinds of labiaplasty. And of course, we wanted to uh, 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 research uh, aesthetic breast surgery, which is one of the most uh, uh, demanded one. Let's start with the first project. We started it last September, and uh, the really, just in a small, for a few words, the background. Many women are not really pleased with the outer look of the genitalia or the size of the outer genitalia and want it to be modified. And the past few years, so decades ago, it was just a simple resection of the labia minora. Now, in the past uh, 10 to 15 years, it just really outgrew itself and it became uh, 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 a really uh, combination of techniques, which uh, consists of uh, old kind of operations, so conventional techniques, and we can also uh, experience every two to three years some new technique to emerge. And this is what we call the uh, genital beautification concept. But let's cut to the chase. Uh, every intervention has actually the same purpose, to alter the uh, outer female genitalia to a better functioning, uh, looking and satisfactory result. Uh, the demand for these kind of operations in the last few years really just skyrocketed. It became a whole new industry. It is uh, one of the most desired uh, female aesthetic intervention nowadays. And we can confidently say that all kinds of these, these kind of operations uh, come with a very high satisfaction rate and are pretty safe. But uh, in this field, in aesthetic surgery, are we pleased with pretty high and, and uh, safe? No. We are aiming for perfection. So, with such intention, we uh, would like to, or we wanted to compare uh, the patient reported outcomes, different techniques of uh, female genital beautification concept. Uh, of course, uh, the question derives from a goal, so which is the safest and most satisfactory methods and methods used in this uh, FGCS, the beautification concept. We concentrated on women, underwent any kind of operation uh, in this concept. We compared all techniques to each other, conventional ones, new ones. And of course, what we were looking for is patient satisfaction, only secondary to complications like dehiscence, hematom, bleeding and infection. Our hypothesis would be, maybe newly emerged techniques are, uh, of labiaplasty are superior than conventional ones, or is there a difference even uh, uh, on the end of the day? We conducted our systematic search with the search key seen on the table. Running down the rabbit hole, we ended up with 56 eligible, wonderful, full texts. And uh, what were our strengths? Why, why is, this, is, is our paper, will be our paper good? Because actually this is the first real comparison between these techniques. Uh, there were some trials before, metanalyzes before, but we have a lot more papers included in it, and we are excluding case reports and uh, we find some classification. Of course, we have some limitation too, nothing is perfect. There is some patient heterogeneity, which we can uh, accept here, and there are no RCTs. It is impossible to find RCTs or even conduct RCTs in this, in this situation. And the biggest problem is, there is no consensus in the score system, in the satisfaction rate. There is uh, not an accepted, universally accepted uh, satisfaction rate we can use, and that gives us a little bit of heterogeneity in the end. Results. We found some interesting results. For example, there was a difference in patient satisfaction. At the end of the day, what uh, it told us, that uh, combination of techniques, patient-tailored techniques, are superior or the very 
easily conducted ones like laser uh, therapy or deapitalization. There was also uh, uh, a significant difference in the uh, uh, complication like dehiscence, where we saw that, of course, more invasive techniques like wedge resection technique has, uh, has a real higher rate for this kind of complication. To conclude something on, there is, of course, a significant difference uh, in patient satisfaction and uh, dehiscence. Tailored, patient-focused interventions or simple, easily carried out interventions are superior, like laser uh, therapy or uh, deapitalization. Of course, that's an easy implication for practice. Maybe we should uh, focus on the patients and tailor the, intervention for the uh, interventions for the patients. And we need uh, a bit more strictened up patient follow-up and questionnaire. And that's an implication for research. We have to, uh, we, we have to uh, find a better way uh, to define the indications and also map out a new uh, universally usable satisfaction score system or at least uh, 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 have a consensus on one and use it widely. We uh, submitted uh, or paper or manuscript into internal review. We are waiting for the answers now. Our uh, target journal will be the American Society of Plastic Surgeons, uh, Plastic and Reconstructive Surgery. They can't wait for a paper and allow me to resettle for my second topic, which is the impact of aesthetic breast surgery on lactation. Well, by all means, without a question, this is the most uh, demanded aesthetic operation worldwide. Almost or even more than one and a half million women undergo this kind of operation every year. It's the problem here that in a lot of times uh, this operation interferes with family planning. And nowadays we know it's already that breastfeeding is not just important because of the transport of some kind of nutrients, but it, it also plays a very big role in uh, psychological and physical development later on in the, in the, in the child's development, baby's development. And we also know that sometimes unwittingly during these operations, uh, aesthetic operations of the breast, we can unfortunately impair the function of the nerves and the glands of the breast tissue. Well, that's uh, an important question. Why? Because I don't know about you, but I really want to live in a world with beautiful breasts and healthy children. And that means, do aesthetic breast operations impair the ability and quality of breastfeeding? Well, we can find it out by concentrating on lactating women and, of course, comparing different types, all kinds of uh, uh, aesthetic breast surgery, especially concentrating on allograft transplantations. Uh, we have to look at uh, women with no history of aesthetic breast surgery for the comparison, and we have to uh, see as an outcome the change in breastfeeding rate and length, so we can tell something about even the quality of the breastfeeding. Our hypothesis is that Unfortunately, aesthetic breast surgery might decrease the ability to breastfeed, but maybe there is uh, an option. Maybe fat allograft transplantation has potentially less effect in it. So, our implication would be, uh, maybe it is advisable to wait a little bit with aesthetic breast surgery and choose to undergo an operation after the family planning is gone, or we will find out which operation to choose. We did our preliminary search. We found already 47 eligible texts uh, we can work from. It's the second pro uh, project uh, is in progress. And thank you for your attention to infinity and beyond as always. May I answer some questions? Thank you for your nice presentation. My Thanks. question is so that uh, uh, regarding your first project, yes, uh, that what is your um, experiences uh, in practice with which um, techniques are the most um, um, happy <laughs> the patients or your patients, and would you consider um, maybe taking an own uh, clinical trial with this technique? Yeah. So to compare this, um, these. Um, type of techniques in your practice? Yes, of course. The problem is, in my opinion, that in Hungary, we don't really know a lot of techniques, so we are using just a few of them. Because in the United States, it's like really, really like a huge uh, industry. There are like 12 different techniques which are using and tailoring these techniques for the patient's needs. 
In Hungary, even the patients doesn't really know that these kind of operations exist and they can undergo these kind of operations. So in my opinion, first, we should educate the doctors, of course, and the patients to, how can I say that, improve the need for these operations in this country because it's not really existing. But what I've seen, actually, most of the patients are very uh, uh, satisfied by these results, really. There, all, there is only a few cases I can talk about when they are not uh, liking the result. But uh, if you're looking... Uh, in Western countries, over there, women are a bit more, how can I say that, uh, uh, sensitive for the outcomes and getting more sensitive to the outcomes. But in my opinion, yeah, it's, uh, it's only the future. But what I would do to go aboard and to learn a little bit, to learn about these kind of uh, techniques, because most of them I haven't seen in my life, to be honest, in real life. Very nice presentation. I hope you will be one of the best surgeons uh, who perform that, uh, these operations. Would be nice. And uh, I have two questions. Uh, are there any warnings for women regarding the age who, who can underwent such uh, operations, like the uh, labia minora plasty? So any warnings from you for girls or, or women regarding the age? Uh, for this operation, this would be the, the first one. And... Uh, uh, do you mean this, uh, does it contain any hazard regarding to the age who undergoes this operation? Yes, yes, regarding because the age. Not really. Actually, this operation can be conducted at any age. It doesn't really matter. Of course, that how can I say that? In, in, post, in postmenopause, they are not really seeking for this, but it's not naturally. And depending on the age. We will look your topic. I, I also looked for the literature and I, I read about some major complications and really oh. uh, actually complication rate is really really low and it doesn't depend on age the most the, so the, the the most common complications are really like like diocesans and the hematome and it doesn't doesn't really have to do anything with the age we had patients from the age of 10 till the age of 65 as far as i remember no 72 in the pay in the in the paper so it's a really wide range of uh, of patients but it doesn't really matter how old they are most of the patients come to us uh, from the age of 14, 15, up to the age of 30. And there is a, there is a second wave when they finish their first uh, connection or first, uh, how to say, when they leave their husband or their husband leaves them and there's the, the second chance. And then they come uh, for these operations. It's, it's true. It, it may um, uh, be strange. But and also to the first question, uh, so it's uh, interestingly enough, the simplest is the best. So you just perform the simplest operations with the with the best uh, results, with the happiness of the patients. The, the age regarding the question regarding the age might have been uh, about uh, uh, in the early teens. There could be some uh, not so developed psychological uh motivation for the operation so like the patient would regret it later or not is there an age you recommend to do it when or you don't uh have such beliefs and do you well, say you would do it for a 10 year old i of can course, I if, can, if it's as i can only only rely on mathematics here so patients are actually regretting this operation really so the the satisfaction rate uh is the highest in all kinds of aesthetic surgery it's really the highest labioplasty so in my opinion, that tells really us that these kind of uh, operations are not regretted by the patients or the number is really, really low. Thank you very much for your uh, really nice lecture. Yes, please. You see, in the Hungarian scientific community, there are still debates whether this meta-analysis is a good thing. And uh, there was a discussion about this last year at the at the medical board of the Hungarian Academy of Sciences, and then they have a kind of very serious discussion. And then Professor Sylvester Vizi made a comment, which I think that's, that's important for all of us, but for this respect too. I mean, that was last fall, actually. And then he said that uh, there are rare side effects, even serious, not in this case, but in certain diseases. And the way, as in certain diseases, I mean, the treatment hazard is a, appears is only when you put together many studies and the rare events actually, I mean, uh, come up actually with, with, uh, with high confidentiality. Because if, you, if somebody does a study, let's say, with a relatively small number of patients, I mean, that is just an odd thing. I mean, if, if, 
let's say that you have some complications in one out of 100. But if you have a complication uh, 100 out of one, 1 million or so, I mean, that's, that's a firm evidence that that should be actually uh, cared. So therefore, for this reason, actually, well, for these studies too, I mean, that would be good to see actually in a meta-analytic way if there is enough, in, enough data that which surgery is the safest. And that applies actually to all of our studies. Uh, because rare events, I mean, rare, I would say that dangerous events, I mean, they should be counted and then they just don't come up with individual studies. I mean, because they are odd, because of the relatively small numbers. So I think what you do is very good, but if you can approach actually to that direction, then that would be also very useful. That applies to others. Thank you. Thank you so much.